innards, be careful this Halloween because Apple might have forgotten some symbols within our ticket OS. Even though you never ever heard about Apple's Artigit OS, it's actually Apple's most widespread operating system. It runs on all the peripherals like the Pencil, but also the AirPods and as well on the main big devices because even the Apple Watch, the iPhone and everything you can find out there, it has various chips that run Artigit OS. Artigit OS is an embedded operating system, a real-time operating system, which is very very tiny and has like a little bit of shared functionality like threading mailboxes timers scheduling all that you need and then it also has a lot of custom stuff in there so custom stuff means for example it has custom logging custom core dumping on every of those devices also the memory management is a bit different depending on the chip so it has additions so not every Articate OS is the same as another. For example, there is 64-bit Articate OS that has ASLR enabled, whereas some other Articate OS just has a standard memory allocator, plus maybe if it's having some C++ modules that were copy-pasted from the kernel or former kernel module, then it might also have a wrapper to this memory manager just copied in there. So it's really not all the same. Each iOS update also ships with the firmware for the Articate OS chips. So that means you can just download any update and extract the firmware and look into them. You first observe that on the iPhone 8 there's only a few Articate OS based chips, but the newer the iPhone is, like the iPhone 14, the more chips it has. And the reason for this is that Apple added functionality, new special chips, but also they outsourced some stuff from kernel modules into separate Articate OS based chips, adding more and more of them to the phone. So for example, you wouldn't find in an older iPhone, but in a recent iPhone, the AGX, the ANE, the DCP. Most of the Articate OS firmware is packed in IM4P files, and those unpacked are macro files that already define all the sections of the firmware. This makes your life really, really easy if you want to explore this, for example, with Vitra. But also some of the firmware might be an FTAP, and an FTAP has fewer information. It just separates the firmware into a ticket and the firmware itself and defines a few sizes. And you can use a Python script to unpack them, but then must generate proper sections in Gitra before loading the files. A few Articate OS still contain symbols. You can check this with NM-A. And for example, Jonathan also writes about this in his iOS internal books, and he writes that the AGX had symbols in the past. This is no longer the case, so you can actually find this now in the A&E, but you would just find some symbols in some of the versions of iOS and then can diff this to the version that you actually want to look into and the chip that you want to look into. And this will help you a lot to start reverse engineering. Once you found two Articate OSs with symbols, you can actually start looking into what is common between them. So in my case, the two Articate OSs I found have 132 symbols in common. Out of these, there are 59 text symbols, 61 section symbols, and 12 data symbols. So not all of them are functions, but then again, some of them might not have exported symbols. So Articuit OS might actually be a bit larger than this. Inside Articuit OS, you might find some four byte character strings, but these strings might be two different things. The first possibility, as Jonathan writes in his books, is that you have a patch base or a patch base is something where you configure a value to a pre-assigned patch slot or you have the possibility that there is still some runtime type information. So if the original code was written in C++ and runtime type information was included, then all the V tables would start with a four character string defining the type and then following V table pointers. But it might not always be the case, so sometimes you have C++ code, but it would just be four zeros at the beginning of the V table. 
And this is something that was also described in a Project Zero blog post in detail. Now, with all of this information, you can actually start reverse engineering RTQS firmware and look into the chip that you are interested in.